Well, if you ever made pudding before, like that, instant pudding, or if you make the homemade kind, you take all those ingredients and you put them in a bowl. And it looks kind of cool, doesn't it? Because you're anticipating, anticipation, it's making me wait. You see all those ingredients in the bowl. And you can even stir those ingredients up and mix them up. And you can mix those things for, for years and years and years, and they will not change or be transformed into something good until you stick it in the fridge. And that's kind of like this whole thing is, God puts everything we need in us, and he even stirs us like with the great worship service this morning. But if we don't go beyond the walls and take this into the world and put it into practice, then we're not changed and transformed. The very thing that we fight against is the resistance that comes against you the minute you step outside these doors. And that's the, does anybody in here like resistance? Oh, I just like to try to do something and have it all hell break loose against it. I just love that. Does anybody? No. You kind of want it easy, don't you? You want to be able to move forward with what God's impassioned you to do. But it doesn't work that way. Because those who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. And I don't mean the kind of persecution where you go in a room and you just start saying Christian stuff to tick people off. No, I don't think that's in the Spirit. Because Paul also said, behave with wisdom towards outsiders. Wisdom is common courtesy. And I so like what, what you folks do here and practice here and what you're taught here is that you receive messages and I've, I've seen you ask people if you can speak into their lives. That's courteous. That's, that's respectful. That's the Spirit of the Lord. That's honor. God doesn't ask us to do things He doesn't do Himself. Is everybody okay today? Raise your can of do up. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The seven festivals. Anybody remember that? What we were talking about a few minutes ago? We left off on Pentecost. There are three left. The next three that will happen. Where we're at in time, where we're at in history, where we're at in God's religious calendar is the festival or feast of trumpets. What happens at the trumpets? Makes noise. The great shofar blows. That was a, that was a signal to what? Gather? A holy convocation? A gathering? The trump of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. Then those who are alive and remain shall be caught up with the Lord. Now, I don't understand pre, trib, post, most, all those. But I do know that where we're at in history, according to God's calendar, is the Feast of Trumpets. And then the next one is not so pretty. It's a day of atonement or judgment. And then the last one is the Feast of Tabernacles where there's nothing but partying going on. Do, please. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So Paul, if you read First and Second Timothy, you see that Paul is equipping a young minister, Timothy, for the work of ministry. 
Realize this in the last days, Timothy. Difficult times will come. Men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips. And while we're on this point, here's some good... It's hard for a pastor to teach this, but I want to... I want, to, I want to share this because it's good counsel and it protects the, the integrity of the body. Do not receive an accusation against an elder except it be witnessed by two or three. And be very careful. Because temptation comes in. You know why, you know why the enemy comes against leadership? You know, I'm not talking about, you know, I know Pastor uh, Steve and they're not, Linnea, they're not like this. But, you know, there's like a superstar leadership pope type, not being disrespectful to the Catholic Church, I'm just saying. There's like this hierarchy, superstar ministry kind of thing. That's not what I'm talking about. But in a congregation... And, you know, smaller congregations are harder to pastor. And I'm not saying this is small or whatever. I'm just saying because there's more visibility. Everybody knows everybody's business and everybody can see and tra- being transparent. One of the hardest things, I, I, you, Pastor Steve, one of the hardest things for me about pastoral ministry was uh, in, two th- well, this, in 2006, uh, I had been diagnosed and did have actually a five-inch malignant tumor in my right kidney. Went to Mayo Clinic a week and a half after I was diagnosed. They took my right kidney out with a mass the size of a five inches softball, whatever that is. <clears throat> and, I, and I went and toured, you know, the hospital, be, you know, just kind of killing time before the surgery, the day before. And I went into this, you know, that's a teaching school, medical school. So you go into this one room. It's like a theater, but it's for teaching, teaching doctors. And everybody stands up on the, you know, the doctors can stand up around and they can look down on the, the patient and the doctors performing the surgery. And sometimes that's how I felt like, and I feel like that being a Christian, but, but really like being in leadership is because you're the one laying on the table totally vulnerable and exposed. And everybody else has the option to look or take on, take part or be involved or take notes or take it serious. But you're really committed because you're there on the table. Does that make sense? And the reason the enemy comes against leadership is because if you can, if you can mess the shepherd up, you can... Who said that? Please say it out loud. You can scatter the sheep. Can do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 2 Timothy 3, verse 4. People will be treacherous, reckless, conceited, and lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power and avoid such men as these. For among them are those who enter into households and captivate weak women weighed down with sins, laid on by various impulses. Listen to this, verse 7. And this is the New American Standard Version. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. How can we recognize when that particular season comes in? It's when we can turn on the TV and we can find a Christian program on every channel we turn to. And when we can turn on the radio and find full-time Christian radio stations and we can find Christian messages on the Internet, we can find Christian pamphlets, we can find literature, we can find the Word of God, we can find His presence, His footprint all over the world, but yet the world is in such a mess. That tells us that we are in the the place and in the time where everyone is learning, 
but not coming to the knowledge of the truth. And what's, what's happening and what's going to happen, according to Thessalonians, is, is that because people reject the truth, then God will turn them over to strong delusion that will make them think, as Isaiah said, that good is bad and bad is good. That's why our president can get up and say that an abomination in the sight of God is okay. I don't think homosexuality is any worse than cheating on your wife or husband. They're all abominations because they're sin to God. But don't be fooled. Don't be, don't be put to sleep. You must take your Christianity seriously. You must take your faith in Jesus Christ seriously. You must take your walk seriously. You will need to be full of the Holy Spirit to make it through these last days. Is this the truth? You will need to walk in truth and in light. You will need to know the presence of God. You will need to know the voice of God. You will need to know the truth that comes from His Word. You will need to stand on the rock. You will need the stability that comes from daily communing with Him in His presence. You will need the Word of God in your life to make it through these last days. But you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you.